Mr. Barry, can you tell us something about the history uh, of the project? Yes, well, this project started in 2003, where the company looked at uh, a number of locations up and down the coast. Uh, this is one of the last remaining areas uh, on the coast where it's possible to put a salt field. Um, the area was set aside uh, back in 1970 for the production of uh, solar salt, uh, so it seemed like a, a good location. Uh, one of the problems with it is that it's very shallow water in the Gulf, uh, which means that um, we have to use barging in order to get the salt out, but whereas all the other salt fields have access to deep water. So this is one of the more difficult locations on the coast, but uh, work started in 2003 to um, come up with a design that would satisfy the environmental and the engineering difficulties that, uh, for this location. What is the ground uh, of the whole area made of? Okay, the, the, um, the strip down here along the coast is, is uh, mangroves and algal mat. Uh, the algal mat is a, uh, a blue-green algae which, which grows uh, in, a, in a narrow band between the mangroves and the salt flats. Uh, then we have this area here down the middle which is very, very flat, which is the salt flats. Um, and the tide doesn't get up that far. The tide only comes up to the limit of the algal mat. Uh, uh, and the only time that water comes on what we call the supertidal flats is uh, under cyclone circumstances where we have a storm surge washes up as far as this hinterland area. This hinterland area is uh, made up of dunes and, and higher land. It's about 15 metres above the supertidal flat area. So the location of the salt field is essentially um, between the upper limit of the tide of the album mat and the, the hinterland and it uses this strip down through the middle. Uh, the salt field is represented by the uh, light yellow lines. Uh, the lower limit of the salt field is, is here, the upper limit is here uh, and this distance is about 35 kilometres. The, the seawater intake is down here, and this is in a, an existing creek. Uh, water is pumped through a pipe uh, into these concentration ponds here, this is the first pond. Then it decants from one pond to another, uh, increasing in density uh, until it reaches uh, this point here. Uh, then it's pumped into this area here, which is the crystallizers, uh, where the majority of salt is made. The further uh, refined bittens is then discharged into this area here, which we call the bittens management area. Uh, and that area is intended to be used for the production of potassium sulfate and then the final end product which is not used is the magnesium chloride. What will happen when you flood the area uh, with uh, seawater and when this seawater will evaporate? Mm. Well the ponds initially are, are filled from the pump station uh, and as, as I mentioned they, they decant progressively into each of the ponds so as they fill um, they reach a certain level which is suitable for the best evaporation rates. Um, during the early uh, months there will be some seepage of the, uh, the seawater down into the silt as it fills the pores, um, but eventually it settles down and um, you have large numbers of, uh, uh, of biota are drawn into these ponds here uh, and over time the fish in here because they have no natural predators will, will grow. Uh, but with increasing salinity, uh, different types of fish uh, occupy different ponds. So we'll have um, uh, brine shrimp will, will, will occupy the ponds down this end, whereas we'll have larger fish at this end. And of course that attracts a great number of birds, and uh, particularly migratory birds, uh, and provides a, a wetland where before there was just barren salt fields. Well, it uh, appears to be a very interesting and uh, attractive project. Uh, now, we hear that uh, you have experienced some difficulties in obtaining environmental approval for the project. Can you tell us uh, something more about that? This is a very large area with uh, obviously a very substantial environmental assessment. But it's made difficult because we don't know what standard we're trying to achieve. It's a bit like uh, the Olympic high jump, where uh, we train hard and we, we aim to jump, clear the bar. And so we run up and we jump and we clear the bar, or what we think we've cleared. And the EPA say, no, you haven't cleared the bar. So we say, well, OK, we'll try again. We'll work harder, we'll spend more money, and we'll investigate more. And uh, 
we try again and we try and jump and we jump much higher than last time and the CPA say but you haven't cleared the bar we say well we, we don't know where the bar is and they say oh well you just keep trying and we'll tell you if you've cleared the bar and that's where it's left and we keep trying and they keep raising the bar to a point we don't know where it is nowadays everyone speaks about the use of solar energy and uh, solar salt is one of uh, the most uh, efficient uses of uh, solar energy. Um, isn't there a conflict between uh, what uh, all over the world people are trying to do to use solar energy for production of something useful and uh, here um, actually avoiding the use of solar energy for the production of a very important uh, industrial uh, commodity. Mm. Well, the terms of reference of the Environmental Protection Authority are to prevent environmental impacts, which are deemed unacceptable. Um, they are required to consider it in the, in the context of Western Australia only. Um, so, if you take a solar salt fuel, which produces uh, salt with very low energy input, um, then one of the major advantages which is to displace high energy intensive vacuum salt from another country, that won't be considered by the Environmental Protection Authority and the uh, offsetting effect of saving um, uh, energy or its carbon footprint is not considered in the context of the West Australian environment. Not only must we design the field around the environment, but we must also demonstrate that it has uh, no or minimal impact on the environment to the Environmental Protection Authority. Uh, and we've been doing that for the last uh, six years, and uh, it's been a long, long road. Uh, but we're reaching, we're reaching the uh, point of a decision now in the next four weeks or so, we expect to get a decision.